We're in the studio with Cannabis Health News Magazine, and we have some special guests today across the board from California headed to New Jersey. New Jersey Weed Man, Frankie Swags, Paris, the great Slingshot O'Reilly are all here with us in the studio. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. <laughs> all right, hey, thanks, thanks for having us there, uh, Jason. Thanks. Uh, and, uh, well, what it is, uh, just to let you know what we were trying to do was just kind of spread the message about jury nullification. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in, you know, there's so many people out there that believe that marijuana should be legal. Jury nullification, folks. So a lot of you out there have not heard that term before. That's one of those uh, things that we're trying to educate people on. Um, real quick, before we bounce into the specifics of jury nullification, um, we've heard of, of uh, New Jersey Weed Man for a while, at least a lot of us in this industry who have been paying attention. Um, the other day I was watching one of your, your videos and you brought up Ken Gorman, a very powerful activist uh, from Denver who was assassinated uh, here. Um, you've uh, been in this industry since the 90s, if I remember right. Exactly. And I remember hearing about you in 2002, I think it was. You had done a couple commercials. I think you were running for office in New Jersey. Uh, and also got yeah. some, some time. Yeah. I think it was five months yeah. in jail. I, I, got, I got locked up for making commercials. Uh. The, <laughs> the state, state officials in New Jersey didn't like my commercials, and they, they charged me with advocating criminal activity. And nothing in my commercials Am I saying anything illegal? I just was questioning the war on drugs. How did that case now. turn out for the well, listening audience? The state of New Jersey put me in, in jail, in their jail. Uh, I filed a writ of habeas corpus, corpus with the federal judge, telling the federal judge that the state of New Jersey has, in, has unconstitutionally imprisoned me in violation of my right to free speech. And I was like, the only reason I'm in jail is because I made these commercials. And uh, it took a little while. In fact, the judge actually didn't believe it at first. He, he, he sought information before he actually acted on the writ. Um, and basically, he gave the state 45 days to show, the, show him that there's another reason besides these, these commercials. When they couldn't show that there was another reason, uh, then he held the writ of habeas corpus The burden hearing. of proof is on that, yeah. right? Yeah, so he, then, he held, then he held a hearing. It took about 30 days. And... Um, <clears throat> At some point, they never came up with an answer, and then all of a sudden, he just ordered me released. It took about five months. I was a little salty about that, but the fact of the matter is, I was right. But it's like, I had one of those dead right stories. You know, it's like walking out in front of a bus and you get hit by the bus, but you had it right away. The you know, you're still dead right. Well, I felt like I had every right to make that commercial, to say what I want. I spent five months in jail. I get nothing out of it. I just like just lost time. Just totally lost time screwed me up screwed my family up everything at the time and then i just got let loose one day it's amazing, <laughs> it's amazing how the system um does that to you You mentioned a key word in there salty yeah <laughs> now this was not your first experience in 2002 you um as i mentioned i'd heard of you earlier from from the 90s tell us a little bit about uh who you are how you got into being a cannabis activist and i would say at this point you're an advocate You've, you're a little bit more um, outspoken and have a stronger voice than just an activist. Yeah, I guess I'd say that. I'd say I, I got my, um, I earned my stripes already. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, I, I think start, that, that's the court case stuff. Yeah, but you know, I, I think since I was a teenager, of all my friends, everyone knew I, I always spoke out about it. I, I've, I think I smoked my first joint by about fifteen, mm -hmm. sixteen, somewhere that summer. That changed, went from fifteen to sixteen. Um, I know for a fact when I was about 18 or 19, I was openly questioning it, you know, to people. Then I went in the Army, you know, kept my mouth shut, this, that, and the other. Thanks for get, your time. For yeah, sure. exactly. That's awesome. You're welcome. And then when I, got, when I got out of the Army, I kept having this conflict that I wanted to smoke weed, but all the jobs you couldn't do. I could have been a sheriff in my town. Mm -hmm. I had four cousins who we all got out of the Army. Our uncles got us jobs in the police departments and this, that, and the other. But I smoked weed, so I had to be treated different. So I couldn't get a job as a police officer. Um, I ended up being a truck driver, which I loved. I've seen the whole country. I've been right, th right through here th through Denver qu plenty of times. But again, it was the whole marijuana thing. Um, I had to own my own truck. I had, you know, I had to work my whole life around being undercover, p 
pothead. You know what I mean? Like I had, like it, it, it. The fact of the matter is, I knew marijuana was a lie. That the lies about marijuana since I was a kid. As I progressed through life, you got to hide it in order to be successful. And I was, I was until I eventually got arrested. That's a that's a big thing in terms of having to hide things. Now, real quick, uh, New Jersey weed man, we're gonna have to take a quick break. We are gonna take a word from our sponsors, and we have someone on the phone. Welcome back to Cannabis Health News Magazine. We're here in the studio with our special guest, New Jersey weed man, Frankie Swags, Paris the Great, Slingshot O'Reilly. Thank you very much for joining us again. So we got a wonderful phone call. We had to take a little break there and have a little comment with one of our sponsors. Thank you very much to Sexy Pizza. They're located at 1579 South Pearl Street in Denver. And you can reach them at 303-830-8111. So we uh, left off with uh, being a young teenager and having to hide our cannabis use. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, the big problem with that is we get uh, confronted or we, we are confronted with either our parents or the law. And it sounds like uh, the latter of those two was uh, one of the big ones that confronted your, your well, situation. Even eventually, it was the law. I mean, I went until I was 33 before I ever got arrested. So I got myself solidly in middle class. I had my own business, my own house, everything. But I was a huge pothead. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in, in 1997, I got busted basically playing middleman on a ship, shipment of swag now i can call it swag but anyway a shipment of marijuana from arizona to new jersey and if you live in a state like new jersey i mean this is how you get your weed i mean mm -hmm. it comes from somewhere else You're, you don't have massive growing operations and two or three people chip and um i'll admit basically throughout the 90s i had got myself involved in you know quite a few marijuana smuggling operations as you want to call it but you know what i still don't feel like, like i did anything wrong you know like, like I don't care if it's one pound of marijuana or a thousand pounds of marijuana. No, no amount of marijuana should be illegal, you know. And I would agree with you on that one. You know, and so uh, I think I, we should all kind of look at the details of what that entails. And hey. but your story is phenomenal well, because you've had, you've uh, confronted all this head on. Yeah. Well, trust me, I would much rather pay taxes on that marijuana than have been in yeah. prison for it. But. Um, in 1997, what happened was I, I got arrested, and when I got read my Miranda rights, and I totally heard this a, a million times, everyone gets read it, anything you say and do can and will be used against you, right? Well, right then and there, I also knew, well, it can also be used for you, you know? And I felt that if it's a contest between who's right and wrong in court with a, with a jury of my peers, I would just simply argue that the law was wrong and people would b agree with me and side with me. So I came out with this concept. Well, I didn't come out with the concept, but I, I tried to encompass the concept of jury nullification right. in a marijuana case. Um, and it had happened before, so I'm not this great marijuana genius who came so up with it So you bring himself, up a, a big, but, big uh, reference, mm -hmm. which is the, the jury nullification, and that actually is um, something that's fascinating to me. I think all this kind of ties full circle. But there's a woman named uh, Laura Creho. Um, I, I used to be in contact with her. I remember know, her whole story. Yeah, and so she also confronted a jury nullification here in Colorado. Right, but she did it from the standpoint of a juror. Right. And right. so I, I'm glad you bring that up because this is a very important piece of information that uh, the listening audience, all of us, really need to be aware of. We forget that there are three components to our government, and one of the most powerful ones is us. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to vote guilty or not guilty, but we can also say that person is innocent and that that law is nullified, it is null and void because we do not support it. We don't have to abide by what the judge says and to you us. you only need one person to feel that way. Right. So could you talk more about that? Well, That's a big well, one. Well, what happened, well, I'll go back up just a little bit. What happened was after I got arrested, part of my whole plan um, to make sure that my juries under, my jurors understood jury nullification was what within three months of getting arrested, I had got enough signatures and turned them in um, to run for Camden County Freeholders Office. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it a couple of weeks later. I realized, wait a minute, I can run for a state office and a federal office at the same time. Right. So then I got signatures again, and I ran for 
U.S. Congress in the first district in New Jersey, all under the legalized marijuana party. I kept holding public events to garner uh, publicity, but I was also, everything was geared towards making sure that one day these jurors would know this guy. Like when they faced him, I'm that guy. I'm that guy that ran for the weed, you know, ran for legalizing marijuana. That's the guy's always talking about. You know, I, I got myself... In the, in, into the public on purpose for yeah. the sole purpose of, of of convincing one person on my jury that I was right. And when I tell you, when I first started doing all my little gimmicks, smoking weed in public, um, you know, driving around in a weed mobile, you know, that was the first time I had the concept of having a weed mobile. I had a webcam I used to come on TV and we come on web every night at four o'clock and smoke weed. <laughs> you know, I, I was I was calling talk shows. I just made myself that guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. On purpose. That public relations and, component, and, if yeah, you will. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know what? None of the reporters in, in my area ever heard of jury nullification. Yeah. Um, everywhere I talked, no one understood it. Um, and at first, even the prosecutor kind of laughed me off. But it took three years for me to finally come to trial. And by the time I came to the trial, that was what the whole argument was about, to stop this guy from doing this. You can't let him do this. You can't let him. You know, that was... All the pretrial hearings, everything was about it. I said I was not going to take a plea. Unfortunately, three days into the trial, I did, and I've always regretted it. Yeah. I did. I, I, they did bribe me with a very, very lenient sentence. Um, Their plea and, bargain. And, I, and I'll, I'll admit it. I, I, I was calling prior to the trial. I was calling plea bargains, uh, bribery by the state. Right. I had made public pronouncements that I would never take a plea. Well, that's a tough situation to be in because it's economic, it affects your family, it affects your own life, it affects so many things. And and honestly, I think they use that as a way to manipulate a lot of us to take that plea, to cop that that plea, Mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, they know, honestly, that when they come at us with these pleas, that if we knew as a whole, as a community, what was happening, we could beat all this. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when people like yourself are confronted with these situations, it's just you. Mm -hmm. You're faced with educating people and your battle instead of having the whole community on your side. And paying bail, losing your job. And And if it involves a DUID, the test. Football coach to your kid. And man, it goes way. How many kids do you have? I have five. Nice. But there there was, I, I remember that. Being this loud vocal guy who talked about legalizing marijuana, I wanted to be the assistant coach with my. They were looking for an assistant coach for my son's football team. <laughs> the dude told me no, because <laughs> you're the weed man. You know what's funny like, about that, and we all know this if we really pay attention like, to mainstream media, is that we see looking, <laughs> we see a lot of the athletes out there, Michael Phelps, and we have a couple I did a rod, the the dog sled race up in Alaska, mm-hmm. people, uh, football players, baseball players NBA who are actually. Players the best of the best of what they do and they use cannabis lawyers judges and they're probably parents too (laughs) like us you know it's amazing so so sorry to to jump in there but uh, please talk more about uh you know how this all began again well again at at that time i like i said i went i did take it to trial after three years i got busted in 97 i took it to trial the whole jury nullification um defense I brought it to the local media attention in, in, in New Jersey. I create my whole persona, but in the end, I took the deal. So okay. after at but, that point, at okay. that point, you now are infuriated. Mm-hmm. You're you know frustrated by by the plea deal. You know you look back. I know a lot of people look back at their pleas and they say, "Man, I wish I didn't do that." Yeah, um, it's hard to go either way. And I'll I won. You. I have to tell you something too. I took the plea on uh, a stipulation that I'd be allowed to poll the jury. And everyone thought it was unusual, but the judge oh, the judge wow. let me poll the jury, and I had five. Oh, I had wow. five. I immediately tried to withdraw my, my plea. I waited about a month, and then I tried to withdraw my plea. That's a really and they wouldn't let me withdraw amazing my plea. piece uh, or amazing story. Yeah. It's just to, to have the, the... The newspapers wrote about the it. The energy every, to ask. <laughs> they're like, dude, would have won. Wow. And, and he took the, How'd you he feel? took the deal. Like I said, I was mad at myself. I blinked. But what did you? For three I mean, years, I was like this solid rock that was not going. What did you do at that? I'm going to knock the state. Obviously, out. it did something to you, though. <laughs> it you know, made you, me mad. Yeah, there <laughs> we go. Right? It made, I've been mad at myself so, though for ten years in this state. But you're made, taking that energy. You're somebody who's not mad at the system and going. You know, 
literally, you know, destroying it or trying to disrupt it in any way from the normal perspective, if you will. You're taking that energy and you have harnessed it into educating people. You went to, you moved to California where you are now uh, traveling mm -hmm. from and uh, opened up a medical marijuana center. Right. And so, actually was a, is, or is a dispenser, it, excuse me, in Colorado was, we call them centers. Right, but what, what, my, what made mine even different was I brought the religious aspect yeah. into it. Uh -huh. uh, I actually incorporated it as, a, as a religious organization, as a Rastafarian temple, and I just made that one of my missions, one of my goals of the church to provide marijuana to sick people. And I would comply with the state medical marijuana Or laws. Proposition 215. Right, and that's, and that's basically how I operated. And at some point, I even got rated out there, mm -hmm. but I won this. I won my case, my arguments at uh, on a state level. And that California. was relatively recent. Yeah, actually, it, it went on for a year and a half, mm -hmm. but but um, it was in the courts. I wasn't in jail or anything. It got treated as a civil case, and ultimately, I won. Actually, in November, um, the 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 state of the state of California dropped all charges. Congratulations! And, That's know, huge. And I, and I won. It was short lived, though. <laughs> It's, we'll get to that. And I'm later. sure a lot of stuff happened in the middle there between yeah. uh, 97 and, and that yeah. case. Yeah, but uh, but I have to tell you what happened, though. Please, there's I mean, there's a lot of stories that we were yeah. talking about earlier. I'd like you to touch on, not even touch on, but if you can get into the details. Well, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stories <laughs> I can say in between. But ultimately what happened, though, after everything that happened to me in New Jersey, trials and tribulations, the runs for office, all that, because I constantly ran for office. That was one of the promises I made in the 90s, that I would run for office every year under the legalized marijuana party until it was legal. So I've run for office like 12 times. Wow. It, you know, um, so those of you listening out there, it can be done. It's, uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but once you figure it out, mm -hmm. it is pretty simple. Yeah, and, and again, it's just publicity. Yeah. I, I, I've made my, my face the face of marijuana legalization in New Jersey. I mean, I don't care anybody. <laughs> anybody who thinks about it, you can't Google New Jersey without me popping up. Right. Um, throw marijuana in it is me. <laughs> we, we did have a little <laughs> tough time searching for that video uh, from, I think it was Philadelphia, when you were uh, arrested for oh, that's the easy smoking uh, for Sacrament. Put in the search engine, no. You can't have my marijuana. Oh, there you go, folks. <laughs> no, you can't have my marijuana. We were searching no, for yeah. New Jersey Weed Man and yeah. uh, Liberty Bell and Philadelphia and yeah, smoking yeah. joint in front of uh, law enforcement. Yeah, I was, we think differently, I guess. Then, then I, you know what? I've always, I've always had an aspect of civil disobedience to me. You know, it doesn't mean you have to be violent, yeah. but I definitely confront things and i definitely i have so much respect for for you saying that yeah um, that's a really big big part of my life um i used to go to washington dc i'm originally from new york we used to go to dc and do the the um Fourth abortion marches oh. and the nuclear protests and and you know everything whatever yeah. down the road and uh, honestly i think that's why we're all here today this is our civil civic duty Mm -hmm. to um, address community issues. And, and what we're talking about is the health and betterment of our society, um, taking away uh, the, the pressure and fear and responsibility of, uh, of our society, uh, or burden, is, if you will, uh, that the law enforcement put out, puts on us and move it to something that we can use that, that betters our lives in terms of health and society and community. Mm -hmm. So um, jumping ahead... You are now headed back to New Jersey. New Jersey. And like apparently, vu. yeah, deja vu big time. You apparently um, were wherever, and, and I want you to get to the story, but you had a pound of cannabis. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you out there who are new listeners and you hear, oh my gosh, it's a pound. A pound of cannabis um, is really not that much. Uh, if, cigarettes. If, for those of us, right, thank you for that is, reference is it, is because you actually have a, a video and a picture, a great reference, and I, I think you really nailed it on that one. Mm -hmm. um, New Jersey Weed Man is pictured holding a carton of cigarettes, which weigh roughly a pound of tobacco, mm -hmm. and then you hold up a pound of cannabis as well. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, if we take that a step further and we are ingesting or we're using it as lotion, so on and so forth, we could easily 
you know, justify, if you will, I hate using that word, many more pounds. Um, I was acquitted of possessing two pounds, two ounces and concentrates. And they tried to get me for 36 plants. I think it was, um, that said, talk a little bit about the people that you experienced coming into your dispensary, both on the medical side, but also, uh, from the Rastafarian perspective for, for religious use. And this is su a subject that we're going to get more into in the future. We have a guest from New Hampshire who's going to be coming on uh, speaking about his um, uh, religious upbringing in, with Christianity and Rastafarian beliefs. But uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what your experiences are well, when people came in your shop. Well, I'll back up to even before the shop. As a as a kid, as a teenager, when I first started smoking marijuana and this, that, and the other, I mean, there, I, have, I live not too far from a community of of uh, C Caribbeans, and I don't want to just say Jamaicans because mm -hmm. there were Belizeans, there were um, uh, West Indians, there were Dominicans. Anyway, and um, I came in contact with Rastafarians, and I and I instantly understood the the difference, and why they smoked it, and at first I definitely referred to them as them as a kid as i got older and i i moved away from um the traditional southern baptist upbringing that most black americans or african americans are brought up under i kind of moved away from that anyway you know i explored a couple different aspects of religion and higher being and mm -hmm. things like that and spirituality right kind of thing. exactly um Maybe it was. I mean, sometimes people th try to throw dirt on it and say, well, you just want to smoke weed, that's all. Mm. But you know what? There was other things that attracted me to the religion, the peace and love, the, the mm. cultural aspect of mm. it, the music. I mean, I, I, I long ago stopped looking at Bob Marley as like a singer. I mean, to me, he was a preacher, a prophet, a sermon. Absolutely. I mean, listened to his words. Yeah. Um, so anyway, when I, moved to, when I moved to California, and I wanted to open a dispensary, a shop. I wanted to bring in, I wanted to make it different. I wanted to make it a unique place where I brought the religious aspect to to the church, to the temple, to the dispensary movement, or however you want to call it. And um, so I opened the Liberty Bell Temple. I called it a Rastafarian temple, temple on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood. And to me, it was like, like I went from, Camden County Jail in New Jersey to Hollywood Boulevard in California. Like I felt like I had a success story. I had actually ended up on TMZ a couple times. Um, um, everyone in New Jersey started watching me and it was covered. It was like I felt like the guy who yelled like I don't even know what the, how to describe it. The guy who yelled that the, you know the sky was going to fall. And you're like, no, it's not. No, it's not. I was that guy. It's, no, it's not. Chicken it's little. Not gonna, yeah, it was chicken little. I was like, no, it's not. It's not going to fall. You know, it's like I proved it. I went to California. I did everything I talked about in New Jersey. All them people thought I was a wacko. You now, wow, look at me now. Yeah. You know, and first I, and they I, call us crazy. Yeah. Then they get mad at us, or you know, right. the whole sequence. And mm -hmm. then they then they love us, right? Yeah. Right. And 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 I and I went through that, and then I went home on a visit. I went home on a visit. Like, I already had my end story, like, to be honest, which I wrote a book, everything. Like I said, I was on TMZ. Yeah. The president knew about me because I had a party for the president. Do you know that? I had a party for, the, for President Obama. That. Yeah, Google that. N.J. Weedman and Obama yeah. party. Because like, uh, remember, he said... Now, I have, to, I have to admit real quick, I'm going to take a sidebar. Mm, please do. I'm kind of extremely yes no. upset with Obama's marijuana policy. Back to where I was. <laughs> and in, in 2008, when he was running for office, he promised that he was going to um, not utilize uh, Justice Department funds to invade states' rights and right. this, that, and the other, right? right. Ogden memo. And, exactly. Yeah. At some point, he initiated the policy. The holder got up in October of 2009 or whatever it was and said the policy has changed. And then, um, you know, I had this party in April, actually, of 2010. And, um, I mean, in March of 2010, a whole Obama party. The next month, April, I go home. I go to New Jersey. You know, I brought some marijuana with me. I brought a pound of marijuana with me. It was my pound of marijuana. Um, I carried it on the plane. So this is all this um, is all personal use, yeah. and this is an interesting topic. This gets into yeah. some other legal yeah. uh, things that oh. I came across in my case. And uh, not to interrupt there, sorry, New Jersey, yeah. New Jersey weed man. I just wanted to take a quick break, mm -hmm. 
And uh, we're going to do a little reference from our sponsors and get a good hello from uh, Gary Johnson out there, hopefully, our presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party, not ours, but one of the Mm -hmm. different parties out there. Um, So please come on back to Cannabis Health News Magazine and uh, join us again for continuing this conversation with New Jersey Weed Man. And when we come back, I definitely want to get to our other guests and uh, what uh, y'all bring to the table. You have some amazing skills, I understand. I haven't heard them myself yet, but uh, hopefully we'll get a, a little flavor too. So we'll be back in a second. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Cannabis Health News Magazine. We're back in the studio with New Jersey Weed Man, Frankie Swags, Paris the Great, Slingshot O'Reilly. So New Jersey Weed Man, please tell us some more. Who are the folks you have with you? All right, well, you know, we're out here spreading this message about jury notification, and I think one of the ways to reach young people or reach certain communities is through music. So um, I've asked a couple of good friends of mine, a couple of associates, Frankie Swags, she's from New Jersey, I've known her a few years, um, she's an artist, and um, they've come up with a song, Jury Notification, um, Frankie Swags, and um, Slingshot O'Reilly. Slingshot is, uh, you know, it, it's funny, I had a dispensary. Slingshot, I remember the first day when she walked in, asking about how, how it all works, this, that, and the other. I never would imagine three years later she'd be in Denver with me, mm-hmm. hanging out. <laughs> um, but anyway, here's, here's, here, here's something they put together. I'm going to help them out a little bit here. Jury nullification. Most people don't understand that a jury has a right to judge the law as well as the evidence. A jury is allowed to look at a law and utilize its own conscience to decide if a law should be legal, is legal, or is proper or correct or applicable or applied correctly. I say that we should utilize jury nullification to start the reefer revolution. Reefer revolution, jury nullification, the solution. Let's talk to it, it's a celebration. NJ Weed Mandate, light it up, hip hip hooray. A reefer revolution, jury nullification, the solution. Let's talk to it, it's a celebration. NJ Weed Mandate, light it up, hip hip hooray. So we smoking mad weed, me and NJ Weed Man. And Frankie Swags, when you greet me, shake my hand. If you lucky, get a bag, thank you. You, sir, ma'am, drop the dub in my hand back to the weed van. I'm just kidding, huh? <laughs> but that's how they treat me. Don't you hear the sirens ringing? What they want, I ain't speeding. Maybe because my trunk beating down your block. Weed in my sock on top, there's a boot. Fresh tailor suit, the hat say so whoop. Tattoos rep the crew, it's BBS food. Don't get it twisted, dude. Pull over, what it do? Smell weed, I got the blues. Cops harassing me for the medicine. I choose, I can't eat, can't sleep. <laughs> no excuse. Uh-huh. Please look the cute, keep your hands above the roof. <laughs> Uh, Not guilty. All day. <laughs> we gonna let the jury choose. Yeah. Uh, it's a reefer revolution. Jury nullification. The solution. Let's talk to it. It's a celebration. NJ Weed Man Day. Light it up. Hip hip hooray. It's a reefer revolution. Jury nullification. The solution. Let's talk to it. It's a celebration. NJ Weed Man Day. Light it up. Hip hip Yo. hooray. For a lifetime now, y'all. Been in this war. To smoke the best perk I'm fighting for This is no part time This is my lifeline Tell me why you give me time For the gunja man You're telling me that this a crime This here in my hand Please understand what's in my hand Keeps me off you man And it's a new day And what I'm trying to say Jury nullification setting everybody free See it's the healing of the nation And then across the nation Potheads talk 420 blazing You turn the dial on every station You hear the talk on how NJ Weed man be this Jersey Cation, and every day we just celebrating. He even got his own holiday tote for NJ 
forsaken And why you at home waiting We in the trenches fighting for patience With medical conditions Give a medical condition to snitches That leave no witness I'm representing my corner of the world with my swisher I'ma light it up and keep it pimping I'm rolling granddaddy purple And some white boys from LA to Trenton And no I ain't got no girl But I gotta get me one of them Yes you can share the split But you gotta bring a couple friends And bring the drama too We gon' talk it up all day long and celebrate with you Yo, a reefer revolution Jury nullification The solution Let's talk to it Yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta yeah. take that beat long And Jay Just a reefer You know <laughs> Previews Frankie Swag Exclusive Swing yeah. shot Yeah Yo, what do you think about that, Jason? That was If I mic up that was absolutely phenomenal. Thank you very much. To have that, I'm gonna take my headphones off. To have that in studio, to hear you in studio, it was phenomenal. Thank you man. for having us, having I've, us, uh, give us, giving us a chance to, you know, to say it, man. We still building it. We like she said, we just wrote it, and when we reach our final desti- destination, we're gonna record, you know, all the songs that we were building on the road. The lyrics uh, alone gave me chills because of I can relate. Yeah. I can totally relate. Yeah. So thank you for sharing the story that all of us. I no think, worries. Can it's for, meant for everybody to feel it, you know. Yeah. Somebody. So and hopefully we have some more. We have one more. Yeah. We got one more. We got one more. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand more. the mic back over because to the New have, Jersey Weed Man. Yeah, we have one more because we have Paris in the house too. <laughs> Paris, thank you, man. Yes. Paris, Paris the Great. As well, I feel honored. We've got some music here that uh, not only is it brand new and you're hearing it first on Cannabis Health News Magazine. But also for iCannabis Radio. Yeah, yeah. Take it away, please. All right. All right. Check it out. Women that I'm sexing, clients that I'm texting. Come before some homies, cause they actin' like bitches That's right, they actin' like bitches And bitches turn to snitches Homies actin' phony, and I don't fuck with snitches Everything all good when a jar full of bud Came through trickin' on your whole neighborhood But now it's all good, cause you got what you could Smoked on my butt, so I left with a shrug You rep your set, I bring my hood BBS in my best set of death Getting at me, well you better have respect Cousin, homie, no except Shuns, none under the sun Said he poppin' your gums while I'm fillin' my lungs Shots is pistol poppin', ooh <laughs> We Son of a gun, quit frontin', son, I put you on Twenty years young with a bag full of bud Came through the spotlight, get you some Didn't do nothing with your bag but smoke Toke, smoke, toke, smoke Toke and choke, drank from cokes when you had dry throat Holy smokes, who stole my smokes? Man, this world is cold, never sell my soul Living in this hell hole Are you the devil, trying to reach my level? Well, bro the time is now or never Heavy duty young paper shredder I shred the cheddar <laughs> Don't get no better I'm fucking poppin' Young Beretta <laughs> Women that I'm sexting Clients that I'm texting Come before some homies Cause they actin' like bitches That's right, they actin' like bitches And bitches turn to snitches Homies actin' phony And I don't fuck with snitches That's right, they actin' like bitches And bitches turn to snitches Homies actin' phony, and phonies can't be homies Yep, yep, homies actin' phony, and phonies can't be homies Fuck it, I'm just gonna get this money The great books say that I shall be saved But if I don't behave, I pray that the Lord forgive me Before him my grave, had it on my four fingers When I know damn well that I'm living to the fullest I might need to run it back, no clap But ten stuck up, buck at the buck Pray I don't get stuck, so stuck and get stuck Cause I spill stuck's guts, fact is a fact And facts that remains, unknown names and names unknown Unknowns are the trees I blow on I'm so gone, loose as a goose, grey goose gone What I'm gon' do, life could be like chess What piece you gon' move? It don't matter, it won't matter, shit it never did Smoke weed every day, it's my medicine Ladies look at me in the face and see I'm interested Mouth closed, mouth open, tell me what it is Cause I'm happy and this is what happy is maybe The people stumbling across me lately Are greatly unappreciated Now I know that's why The more I rise, the more folk lie The more folk die when it's cold outside My heat's turned on I'm far gone, man, my mind's fun But I'm having fun and fun feels wrong At the same time, fun feels right Carpe DM, we don't get to live twice So fuck what you say, life I embrace BBS bitch, ain't a thing finna change Yeah That's all we, you know, that's all we got 
women that I'm sexting, clients that I'm texting, come before some homies, cause they acting like bitches, that's right, they acting like bitches, and bitches turn to snitches, homies acting phony, and phonies can't be homies, <laughs> homies acting phony, and phonies can't be homies, fuck it, I'm just gonna get this money, No? Yeah. That's why we decided to perform this one for exactly. you. Exactly. You don't fuck with snitches. <laughs> None. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know? No <laughs> snitches. <laughs> PTG, Slingshot O'Reilly. You know it. <laughs> Y'all hit it first. Red checks. Yeah, never been recorded before. Y'all hear it first. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I, I wish people in the studio could actually hear what I'm hearing over my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> That's this is phenomenal. Thank you so much performing that no for, for, for performing that in the studio. Yeah. I feel like you sent chills down my spine. <laughs> <laughs> Your voice is phenomenal, Paris. All oh, the thanks. girls' voice is really phenomenal. Your energy, Frankie, is really, it, sh it comes right through the headphones. <laughs> the lyrics alone, I think, will hopefully open some eyes out there. It really brings things, it sends it home for all of us. So thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. My hope, my hope is a... BBS. The, the word jury nullification Blended goes throughout ink. the hip hop community. When <coughs> one thing just I the definitely introduction, just the introduction of the word. Yeah, there you go. Is uh, you know, it hasn't happened. It doesn't happen at school. It doesn't happen in mainstream press. But a way to get to young people, I believe, is through the music. A lot of cultural um, expressions are expressed in music and. You know, this is this is why I had to include artists. In Creative my artwork. Yeah. It could be painting. I mean, your your van, the the Weed Mobile, has the expression of painting and artwork and graffiti. Uh, your your lyrics and the voice and the music is the creative form of sound. Um, I think that you know anything, the sculpture, what we wear, how we act, it's our voices, how we Amendment. speak to people. Yeah, it's all about the First Amendment. It's our expression, and that creative expression is critical. Exactly. So there's, there's uh, a lot of questions I have for you all of a sudden. Um, but one of the things that uh, I do want to come back to is why you're coming through. And to bring this home, you're facing charges. You're facing an F4 felony for over eight ounces. And um, tell us a little bit more about what we can do as a community for you right now. Because some of the things that came up in the lyrics of the song are things we're facing today. We need to come together and support each other as a community. We don't need those snitches. You know, that's something <laughs> that comes up in this community a lot. Uh, it's, it's something that really is, is uh, tearing us apart. Um, and so we need to really figure out, you know, what, how to make that work. But that exactly. said, tell us about what we can do for you right now. Yep, we're living in a snitch nation nowadays. Um, well, it's like deja vu. You know, you know. Earlier, I was telling you about my my last case in New Jersey. Well, at this point, in April of 2010, I went home from California to visit New Jersey, and I did have a pound of marijuana with me. Um, I, I I got off the plane. I had my suitcase. Several hours later, I was pulled over by a New Jersey State Trooper. It was the medic medicine I carried with me from New Jersey, from California to New Jersey. Now I'm a card-carrying patient. I have my own medical needs, my own issues. I have the federal right to travel. We all do. Why do I have to switch medicines when I cross state lines, though? If I got my medical card issued by the state of California, why isn't my card protected? Or um, There's something... You bring up something here that um, I found out myself in my case, and uh, I'm just finally recalling this. And that is that um, there's an end user law, apparently. And I think it exists not only at the state level, but I'm pretty sure there's a federal end user clause or something like that. That says, that says basically, 
if you are the end possessor of something, whatever it is, and you don't have the intent to distribute and so on and so forth, that that's your right. So you, you're bringing up something that um, is very interesting. Uh, we, we recently have seen that uh, the FAA says that we're not allowed to, or the Fed say we're not allowed to fly with our medicine, the cannabis medicine specifically. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and so you've uh, you've done something that, uh, and that wasn't the issue. You're you're just no. telling us part of the yeah, story that, that the, which is I think phenomenal mm-hmm. to uh, step up and say, "Hey, I fly with cannabis." Right, and and wow. and again, if if I had a case of aspirins, <laughs> I can fly from any state I want to fly, and that case of aspirins will kill you. <laughs> Twelve <laughs> of those aspirin will probably yeah, kill exactly. you. Exactly, yeah. and um, no amount of marijuana will. Yeah. Um, but anyway, hey man, in, in my in my ultimately in my case in New Jersey, I want to get to it real quick. Is uh, I don't want to take a plea this time. I basically want to argue once again that the law is wrong. I think there's a huge difference in how the laws how marijuana is looked at now in 2012 as opposed to what it was in 2000 when I went to trial the first mm-hmm. time in New Jersey. I believe over 50 percent of people in America believe that marijuana should be legal. I believe. A jury of my peers in Burlington County, New Jersey, I believe I can get at least five or six people on my jury who also believe that marijuana should be legal. Um, And my argument and what I want to present as my defense is the law is wrong. New Jersey Constitution Article 1, Paragraph 6 specifically says, in all prosecutions, the jury may be told the truth as evidence and the jury may judge the law as well as the facts. Anybody can look that up. Nice. Then why can't I present the argument then that the law is wrong? I can point out, I can show you the flaws in the law. For instance, <laughs> the state of New Jersey says that marijuana is a Schedule One drug. And has no medical and, and value. It has no right, medical right. value, and it's prosecuted me under this law. But yet I know that three months before I was arrested, the New Jersey Medical Marijuana um, Compassionate Use Act was passed that specifically says marijuana has medicinal value. So why am I being prosecuted for something for a law that says it has no value and we all know it does and the state has acknowledged that. I think a member of my jury would say something's wrong with that law. Absolutely and you I know, hope I hope that I, that's something that yeah, comes comes up in your yeah, case. Yeah that, that that's absolutely. I have to assume you're going to testify for oh, yourself. I, I represent myself. Absolutely. The reason why I represent myself is because I understand that the, the most powerful entity in the courtroom is not the prosecutor and is not the judge. It is the jurors. And if my life is on stake, I want to talk to the jurors myself. I want to connect with the jurors myself. I want to give my own opening statement. I want to pick the jurors. I want to give my, my questions, uh, my voyeur questions, when I, when I pick my jurors. I'd love I to talk to you about that one. I'll share some, hot dar, some things I did you know? with mine. I want to use my pot dar. I think I can walk in the crowds and pick out people who smoke marijuana just by their body language when they see me. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a stereotypical pot you, you are absolutely right. You, you pick know? up on something. That, uh, <laughs> we, it was like a poker game in the beginning. It's like you get to look at your cards and, and the mm-hmm. jury are your cards, right? Mm-hmm. People and give you eye signals. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll get it. You'll catch it. It was weird because I had, uh, me. <clears throat> excuse me, in my case I had. Excuse me, I'm, I'm like choking up here. I had like uh, five or six, it may have been seven people, if I remember right, mm-hmm. that recused themselves because they said they support the cannabis law. And I'm sitting here going, yeah, uh, why are you ha- telling me now? That happened right? to me before, too. <laughs> in my first trial, you see, like every black woman that came up there wanted to say, and this, it happened to me. Every one of them were like, they couldn't convict me. They wouldn't, they wouldn't want to be a part of this case. I need off the case. I'm like... Yo, All right. so, lady, so you're who let I me need. ask you something. I need you to stay on the jury and go. I'm not convicting this man. They called themselves so protecting me by getting off the jury. Now, would that yeah, same thing totally happen if it. this case was about some sort of you know racial issue between two different racial groups, and and if some juror stood up and said, "Well, you know, I'm Chinese and that guy's Chinese. You have to recuse me." They wouldn't have recused the guy, right? Right. So why? It's interesting. We're in a position where we have people who actually support what we're doing. But they are recusing themselves. Yeah, that happens. Or if they actually don't get recused and people raise that question when they're going through, you know, the, the uh, questions between prosecution and, and defense with your jury, they they say, oh, well, you can't be on this uh, this jury because obviously you're going to skew the case and 
in that person's favor. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's really fascinating to see how we're right. we're treated. It's, at this point. it's supposed to be a hung a, a a prosecution jury. That's what it is. Yeah. You know, what if I just stood there and every question I just I just asked three questions: Do you smoke marijuana? Have you ever smoked marijuana? And and let the prosecution use up all his. His 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 are you, strikes. Are you going to try and get cameras in the courtroom? Because I know if you ask permission, in the courtroom. there are in, in, in Burlington County. This New is Jersey. New Jersey. Is yeah. that that courthouse right by the Lincoln Tunnel? No, okay. no. This is down in South Jersey. Basically, it's okay. uh, twenty miles north of uh, Philadelphia, but on the Jersey side of the Delaware River. Gotcha. And it's. Uh, you know, for New Jerseyans, it's uh, exit five of the turnpike. <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, um, but but that's one of my tactics. I think if you have a jury pool of 100 people, if I just, I'll just spend my, it's not against me, though. I'll just ask those hard questions. Out of 100, there's going to be more than 12 do you who have, smoke marijuana. Do you have supporters at, at, at home in New Jersey that can come and protest outside the yeah, so there's a there's a the New Jersey Coalition of Medical Marijuana. Is a, the is New an Jersey Coalition of Medical Marijuana. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're in Google them. They're, they're okay. a big uh, organization. Um, that has been supporting me um, over the years. I've been a one-man gang, and I tell you, um, here and there and the other. I'm not going to name any, but there are the bigger organizations have, you know, haven't shown any support here, there, and the other, or criticized me for one reason. When or another. you say the bigger but organizations, can you be specific? Can you be specific? Nope, nope. No. I'm not going <laughs> to stroke the fire. Oh, I like pushing <laughs> the boundaries on things like that. But. But, you know, for the sake of this conversation, though, I will say that Ken Wolkowski, I believe is how he say his name, from the New Jersey Coalition of Medical Marijuana, has been very supportive. He totally understands the jury nullification argument. He's, um, he's had protesters show up at, at some, several of my court hearings, and Great. he's uh, definitely helped me spread my Occupy My Courtroom message throughout New Jersey. I believe that courtroom is not going to be able to hold the potheads that show up for my trial. That have, would be I fantastic. Have, and that's almost starting to hear. Well, I've gone on record also to say that I believe that I'm uh, conviction proof. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is for the last 15 years, I've polluted that jury. Mm-hmm. You know, they all know me as that guy, the weed man. These are voters. People who end up on juries are people who vote. I run for office every year. You know, remember I told you I ran in the last 12 years? If they paid any attention to any politics, there was always weed man on the ballot. These are the people that are <laughs> long-term uh, participants in community and news and politics, yeah. and so they know what's going yeah, on. so they're going to know all my arguments, yeah. and they're going to know that, yeah, they might have thought I was a wacko damn 15 years ago, but you know what? Man, he went out to California. Wow, they do this, that, and the other over there. Something's wrong with our law. We want to put him in jail for 12 years. The state of New Jersey wants to put him in jail for 12 years. And I'm and I'm going to be begging them just to let me go back to California. <laughs> well, I think you, you know, know one thing that I that I learned about about you uh, is you have uh, tumors that are growing out of the end of your femur. Exactly. And uh, they're not cancerous, but um, that aside, we know that cannabis can uh, create a condition of um, apoptosis for cancerous cells, but it can also reduce tumors. Mm-hmm. And so we know Irv Rosenfeld, for example, uses cannabis, and he's one of the federal patients right. who's allowed to use cannabis that we pay for with mm-hmm. our taxes. And uh, he he uh, has bone, bone growth, so similar to what you're talking about. I absolutely have. plan on bringing him up. Great. I have, I have the whole little federal Have package. you talked to him? No, I've never talked to him. I, I, I met him before at some normal function in Washington, D.C., maybe 12 years ago. So I do know, who, and I, you know, I've read about, up about him. I've met Elvi Masuka plenty of times. Yeah, Elvi's wonderful. Um, but, but no, um, Irv, Irv is uh, comes out here often now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that he was just out here what about three weeks ago, if I remember right. Elvi's been out here a couple times. She's a wonderful woman. And then there's also George McMahon and uh, Barbara mm-hmm. Doug- Douglas as well. Mm-hmm. Those are those are people that are definitely key to bring up in your case. Um, but in terms of your medical condition, you do have. Aside from our beliefs about social use or industrial use, in regards to medical use, you have a condition that is alleviated by cannabis. It's not just alleviated in terms of your discomfort or pain or what have you, and I'm making assumptions there, Mm -hmm. but it is also something that could potentially potentially prevent the the, uh, spreading or growth of the tumor. Exactly, but to be honest with you, the the best thing that's good for 
as far as I'm concerned, is the pain. Right. Uh, it absolutely yeah. works for pain, and, yeah. and, it, and it works, and it works for. It doesn't take it away, but it just like it takes my mind differently. It makes my mind feel because it's always there. To be honest with you, my leg at this point, my leg always hurts, but I have always dealt with pain pretty good. But I have a condition that I believe that should be on the list of New Jersey's medical marijuana laws anyway. And that's mm. another thing mm-hmm. that the, I get to present to the jury that the law is wrong, but. I usually don't lead my legalization arguments with my personal medical condition. And very few people even knew I had certain conditions. But I've always um, said that I was a legalizer. You know, yes, I even can be ha- called a carpetbagger for going to California. <laughs> you know? <and laughs> I've doing heard these terms thrown around. It doesn't matter yeah. where we're doing this. It's exactly. still whole America, right? Yeah. Right. But I've always represented myself as a, uh, as a uh, <laughs> sol- sol- soldier of c- civil disobedience, too. So everything that I was doing in New Jersey, in California, was still reflected back to people in New Jersey that saw me as, you know, as 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 this this guy who did it. He's done it. He's he's mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. And now, I always felt like when I left New Jersey, I I said I made a video. To be honest, I made a video where I say I'm coming back. You know what I mean? I'm coming back, and I'm, I feel more like General MacArthur <laughs> coming back to kick Yahamoto's ass than. <laughs> Then, you know, in my analogies, I'm going back to kick Christopher Christie's ass. These are his policies that I'm getting ready to destroy yeah, yeah. with this jury nullification case. Yeah. And that may sound a little uh, little ballsy, but I've already made that choice to go all or nothing. It was that salty you know? uh, reference that you made early on and uh, when you first got here. It, oh. it, the system makes us salty and yeah, we become um, abrasive ourselves. We have to, unfortunately. Yep. I think, honestly, a part of it comes from uh, the apathy our, of our culture, you know. So um, I know that uh, we've been here for quite a while. Yes. But uh, How are you going to edit this into an hour? It's going to be amazing. An hour right now. So it's amazing <laughs> what Chris did. See? I think we can. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Okay. He's the magical Chris. Thank you very much to our producer, Chris Custer. Oh, this is, this is not just going to be one show. We were supposed yeah, to throw a... There you go, yep. and oh, you didn't get you didn't get our shout outs. No, and and so. Yep. When we come back, uh, no, I'm me. saying for for our our, what, our plug of your show. One thing that uh, I would of, I would like you to do is uh, Frankie, if you could give a shout out for if you have a website or or that kind of thing, and then also um, for Slingshot and and uh, Paris. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead in three. Uh, so. Okay. You want to you want a sound gap so you can just roll into it. Um, and, and what is she? Is she gonna say doing? cannabis health news? <coughs> um. So uh, do you have? Well, let's do. Yeah, let's do. Let's do the ending of the show. And then we'll do bumpers. And then how about the? Well, I guess do you have organizations or or websites you want to do a shout out for? So I'll, on the closing of the show, I'll ask you. Um, not I'll say no, not th- nobody uh-huh. in particular, just ours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Or anybody you can say hi to anybody you want. When does this go up anyway? I'm just curious. Um, as soon as he edits it. <coughs> yeah, as soon as I edit it all, so probably like Saturday night. Or uh, okay. no, probably won't be Saturday night. I have um, it's cool. No rush. No rush. I was just, I was just curious. I put it on Monday morning. We're back with Cannabis Health News Magazine, and this is the end of our show, folks. And I want to make sure that uh, we get a shout-out from Frankie and Paris and Slingshot, as well as New Jersey Weed Man, about uh, how people can get in touch with you and where they can hear more of your music and your creations and how to uh, possibly see you perform. So, Frankie, tell us a little bit more about your uh, okay, thank your, you. your communication. Uh, thank you. Um, well, Frankie Swags, basically, um, F-R-A and K-I-E. Swags, S W A G G Z. Um, I have the Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. I, I can't even begin to, you know, Frankie Swags, the name never changes. But you can go to the website always, and that's um, www.royalstar, that's R O Y A L S T A R R.com. All right, and I want to say peace. I love you to my mom. <laughs> all right, bless you. Thank you very much, Frankie. <laughs> Thank you very much, Frankie. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, shout out to moms. It's always a good one. Hi, mom. I don't do that often. 
and then Paris. How about yourself? Tell us a little bit more about how people can get in touch with you. Um, we have a website. Go ahead then. Um, well, collectively, us together, we built our own website. It's called um, ptgandsling.tk. It's ptgandsling dot tk. And pretty much, you can go on there to check out our music to get links to our um any updates that we have on upcoming events um our clothing line her tattoos my piercings there's pictures of all that stuff so you can just check us out get on our subscriber list and you know if you um interested in getting tattoos you could just go to facebook.com and type in my email address it's, uh, paris p a r r i s W A R D L O W at Yahoo dot com. And send a message. Fantastic. Thank you all for giving a shout out to everybody and giving us your contacts as well. We'll hopefully have you back and thanks for sharing some of your music earlier. Here you heard it here first on Cannabis Health News magazine. All right, should we just roll into to uh the um B-roll. NJWeeMan.com. Oh, I want to say NJWeeMan.com. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So you're not talking then? Nope, I'm not talking on this. We're just going to get NJWeeMan's promo. And then what I'll ask is if you can each do a... Uh, hi, you're listening to iCannabisRadio.com uh, or something you know, along those lines. iCannabisRadio.com? Yeah, iCannabisRadio.com. Sort of one of those generic promos. Okay. Cool. All right, so say the NJWeeMan on. On three. Maybe. Okay. And I like... One, two, no. three. Okay. Um, <laughs> duh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny when you're not used yeah, to like, doing yeah, it normally? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's like, okay. I'm rolling into this. All right, so let's just start conversation. So right, we're I'll here, and uh, we're, we're going to talk to a New Jersey Weed Man, and he's got his whole thing. How do we get in touch with you? Generally, I put everything on my website, njweedman.com. Now, this is, this is going to be a dated interview, so this is a week before my... Two weeks before my trial, um, which I call Occupy My Courtroom. I wanted the public to come to my courtroom. I, I would like to go to trial, utilize my jury nullification, and, and be a winner. And that would be the end of my story. So I hope when you hear this, you not only will go to my website, njweedman.com, but you'll also be able to pick up the phone and call me or smoke me out or hang out with me or get in business with me, and I'll be free. You know, Otherwise... I'll be in prison, and this will be one of the martyr interviews, and I don't want that. Peace. I, I only need one, though. Not guilty. You are innocent, and we're going to have you over at the April 20th events in Washington, D.C. on stage so you can tell the story free, as I you are now. I hope so. Thanks again for joining us. Boom. This Frankie Swags from Royal Star, and I'm listening to iCannabis Radio. Puff Puff Pass. It's the New Jersey Weed Man, and I'm listening to iCannabis Radio. What's happening, Captain? It's Paris the Great, Blunted Ink, and I'm listening to iCannabis Radio. What's up, everybody? It's Slingshot O'Reilly, owner of BBS, a.k.a. Blunted Ink, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio.